Lesson 87, again another review section of uh, 73, I will there be light. I will use the power of my will today. It is not my will to grope about in darkness, fearful of shadows and afraid of things unseen and unreal. So pretty strong words there. Um, I will, you know, I will there be light. So it's almost like saying, you know, my intention is to be in the light. My intention is to be in the light. I will use the power of my will. It is not my will to grope about in, dark, in darkness, fearful of shadows, and afraid of things unseen and unreal. In terms of like lesson 14 of A Course in Miracles, where it says things like, God did not create war, create war, so it is not real. God did not create cancer, so it is not real. So the Course, um, for me, is sort of saying, like, everything that the ego perceives is not real. It's not, it's not true in God's reality. So these are all perceptions, or if you like, dualistic, the dualistic dreaming, the, or the illusory dreaming, of being within the fields of the ego, which is again another way of saying being in the ego is to experience oneself in separation and fear. So as soon as you're seeing yourself as separate, you're in the worlds of shadows, and you're not a real shadow even, because you know, even your shadow of being in separation is not real. And the shadow is afraid of things unseen and unreal, because there isn't in truth there has never been separation. Is just, uh, if you like, it's a dream or an illusion. Or another way of saying it, it's like a dream. Uh, like in India, they sort of say it's just a dream of God. You know, God's just having a bad dream. <laughs> and, um, yeah, you know, and it's, quite, it's kind of a bad dream. And then he stops dreaming and it's just all light again. And then suddenly dreams again. And then there's this whole, you know, dualistic perceptual world start to exist. So, so light shall be my guide today. I will follow it where it leads me, and I will, I will look only on what it shows me. This day I will experience the, the peace of true perception. So, um, light shall be my guide today. I will follow it to where it leads me. Well, you know, again, if you're not in the light, I would go with the earlier lessons, look for the light within. And I would do self-inquiry. So what's observing the darkness? What's observing my sense of self? What's observing my thoughts? What's observing the images? What's observing my vision? What's observing time? So that will lead me to the light within. And then <clears throat> that will also lead me to peace and oneness. So these forms of this idea would be helpful for specific applications. This cannot hide the light I will to see. So what I would say here is, <clears throat> again, what I, my, my view on this would be saying, do not, do not make anything that you see special, is what I'd say this is saying. This cannot hide the light I will to see. So if I see something and I identify with it and I hook into it and I make it special, then, then it will seem like the, height, the light will disappear. But actually, uh, it's like an affirmation to say, this cannot hide the light I will to see. And the light I will to see <clears throat> is a spiritual state. So I, I think this can be misleading, especially if you're in addiction. Because in, in addiction, things are reversed. So when you see your, the object of addiction, it's like the object of addiction lights up but the rest of the world is dark. Mm. So like, if I was in like donut addiction, then it would be like I'd, the whole day would be dark. And when I'd see a plate of donuts, they would light up, you know, and, and, and it would be like, it was, you know, so, <clears throat> because they're associated with, uh, with, um, with, uh, with a heightened experience. Same happens with drugs, alcohol, with love addiction, codependency. It's like when you see the person, you suddenly light up. Or the person seems to light up. 
So this cannot hide the light I will to see. So I think, you know, I want to give clarification. It's not talking about addiction. Because the light I will to see is a spiritual state. It's not like, it's not, of course it's not teaching that the light comes out of a, just donuts and nothing else. Or the light just comes out of alcohol. Or the light just comes out of, of, a, of like a famous actor or actress. It doesn't mean that. So the light is a spiritual state. So the light is equal everywhere in all things. So you stand with me in light. Like, let's say, like for some people, George Clooney would be a good one, you see. You stand with me in light. So you'd be like, you stand with me, like, George, you stand with me in light. <laughs> you know, so, you know, I, I don't think these ones are that effective, personally, because, you know, I think it would be like, more effective would be like saying um, that George Clooney... Well, you know, you could say it, but you also need to do it on everything else in the room. Because if you just say, you stand with me in light, George, let's say George was like lighted up, and then you didn't do it with everything else in the room, and so it'd just be like George would be in the light and everything else would be in darkness. So that's not, I think, what the Course means. But um, that would work with a resentment, but not with, addi with addiction, where you already see them as being like, almost like godly, saying that you stand with me in the light would only work if you did that with every single other object equally in the room. Otherwise, you just say, well, okay, I see that George was already in the light, but everything else is in the darkness. Now, that's just my take on it from my experience. But it would work with a resentment, because then you'd see, like, let's say I was resentful for someone at the office, and uh, everyone else would be beautiful and lovely and you love everyone. But as soon as you look on this person, they'd be in darkness, you'd hate them. So if you say, you stand, me, you stand with me, like, if, if the boss's name is Adolf, then you stand with me, Adolf, in the light. So that would work then for a grievance. But I wouldn't use it on, on, an, on an addiction. In the light, this will look... I like it. I always like it will look different, yeah. <clears throat> so in the light... Adolf will look different. Or Donald, it could be Donald as well. Donald will look different uh, in the light, <laughs> or Adolf. Um, and George will look different in the light. So those are practical applications for applying it. The other one is a review of Lesson 74 of A Course in Miracle. There is no will but God's. So I am safe today because there is no will but God's. I can become afraid only when I believe there is another will. I try to attack only when I'm afraid, and only when I try to attack can I believe that my eternal safety is threatened. Well, that's quite a lot being said there. So, I'm safe today because there's no will but God's. You know, uh, you know, one of the things I do, I go to these 12-step programs, and I often say, can often say, thy will be done. You know, thy will be done. And there are many spiritual teachers which talk about like things like radical acceptance, um, just uh, allowing what is to be without... Um, like Hawkins would say, just allow the experiencing of what is now to be experienced without any kind of ego label. One doesn't need to e label anything that's happening now or have any resistance to what's being experienced in the now. Just allow everything to happen without any editing or without any resistance. So, and then, so there is no will but God's. Now, here's the thing, like some people in some spiritual paths will hear about things like God's will and self-will. Self-will being the ego's will. But if there was, <clears throat> if there is no independent ego, then there can only be God's will. So there would be, and if you look at the ego as like that thing which has an independent will, wanting the world to be different all the time to the way it is, then if that disappeared, then there there is no will but God's because there is there is oneness with God. So there is no like, if you have an ego, you could say like God, it should be sunny today, it shouldn't be raining. But if there was no ego there, then there wouldn't be like a, an argument with God when it's raining. There'd be, it'd be, there is no will but God, there is only God's will. You see, there, there's going to be no little tiny voice there arguing with everything. 
So I'm safe today because there's no will but God's. It's also a great thing with acceptance and surrender because those who can either can completely surrender or surrender very quickly uh, usually enter into flow states or oneness states because they're never angry whatever happens. You know, it's like uh, someone cuts your foot off, but that's fine, you know, this complete acceptance. Um, I think actually that was a th one of the things which I was really inspired by hearing one of Dr. Hawkins' stories when he was um, using a chainsaw in the forest to, to cut wood and he cut his thumb off and he immediately, um, with his chainsaw, and uh, he immediately surrendered rather than going to a big argument about like, this can't be God's will that my thumb has just been cut off. And, uh, you know, the, miraculously the wound healed up very rapidly. And um, so that's what happens when you surrender. It's like miracles tend to happen to save the day. It's because one had surrendered rather than gone into resistance about what, what is happening. So I can become afraid only when I believe there is another will. I try to attack only when I'm afraid. And only when I try to attack can I believe that my eternal safety is threatened. Again, if you had no separate sense of self arguing or labelling or saying things shouldn't happen, then the eternal presence would always be recognised and one would recognise that one is eternal. And even that which, was, which is the body and the thinking, even if that was about to die, you'd realise your eternal nature cannot die. So it would have either no or limited impact, that that which is limited is not seen as oneself. So whether it dies or stays, because everything in the world of the temporary, transitory or changing is not identified as self. So, you know, so then you'd recognise that your eternal safety can never be threatened. But it's when you're identified with the limited, with the temporary, and you think the limited and the temporary, i.e. your body, is yourself, then there can always be fear, fear of death, fear of the body getting old, fear of illnesses, all of that can, can exist. So today I will recognise that all this has not occurred. Isn't that amazing? It's, it's a bit like God did not create it, so it's not real. So it'd be like, let's say, um, you know, on the news, it says Armageddon is going to happen and in three hours the whole world is going to be destroyed. So you could, you could just say, today I recognise that all this has not occurred. And that, that could be one you could repeat. Another one is, I am safe because there is no will but God's. You know, these are for me like conundrums, because if you say I am safe because there is no will but God, because in a moment when there's fear, the ego is not wanting the world to be the way it is, and therefore it's going into a state of fear. So it's going to say, oh my God, there's a nuclear missile headed towards the UK. But if you say, I'm safe because there is no will but God's, and if you stop labelling the whole situation, then you'll recognise God's eternal, God's eternal self, and therefore you'll realise that you're always safe. It's only when you go into ego or limit, the limited self that you can, you're in a world of, of dualistic perceptions in where fear and death seem to be real. Uh, there are some useful forms of this idea for specific application. So the first one is, let me perceive this in accordance with the will of God. Okay. The next one is, it is God's will, you are his son, and it's got in brackets name, and mine as well. Okay, I think this is like for a grievance. So let's say, let's say I've got a grievance against Donald. So it's God's will, you are his son, Donald. And mine as well. Isn't that nice? It's like I'm God and Donald's my son. How could I hold a grievance against Donald <laughs> when he's my son? That's, that does work, actually. So if I put my position in the, as the loving God of all of humanity, so it is God's, it is God's will, you are, and let's say I had a, my ego had a grievance against Donald. So it is God's will, you are his son, his son Donald, and mine as well. Yeah, I do feel love for Donald. That works. It does work. It does work, actually. 
Uh, this, this is part of God's will for me, however I may see it. Oh, that's interesting, yeah. This is part of God's will for me, however I may see it. So let's say you've just got the sack. Your boss goes, you're sacked. So this is part of God's will for me, however I may see it. This is kind of like trying to tell me, like, I need, really, I think, another way it's sort of saying, like, I need a miracle to see this differently. So this is really, this is not a bad thing that I've been sacked. This is part of God's will for me, however I may see it. But if it's God's will for me, there's probably some good in it, why I've been sacked, you see, something like that. Pray for a miracle to see it differently. Or, you know, like I've got an insurance thing going on at the moment. So this is part of God's will for me, however I may see it. Yeah, God wants this insurance thing to be happening right now. Okay.